All right, sorry about that. Next slide, if my computer lets me. Protein. So this this is really, you know, if, if, if you're as old as I am, you remember um, walking into GNC or getting a muscle mag and you see a big pro bodybuilder that weighs 300 pounds, all juiced up, holding a protein bottle saying, hey, if you eat protein, you're going to look like me. The problem is, is that's just simply not true. Protein's not just needed for muscle. We use protein for hair, skin, and nails. We use it for bones and ligaments and also repairing muscle and building muscle, but we also need it for neurotransmitters. We need it for blood cells. We need it for enzymes. And believe it or not, our thyroid needs the amino acid L-tyrosine, which is just an amino acid that we get from protein. Um, there's two types of protein, for lack of a better term. You have complete proteins. Um, so there's nine amino acids that our body can't create on their own. I know this is super geeky and probably you'll never use this information. However, there's nine amino acids are, that our body needs on a daily basis that we must get from food. When we talk about incomplete proteins, it's protein sources that typically or that don't have all the essential amino acids. They may be missing one. They may be missing more than one. Um, Obviously, we want to eat as many complete proteins as possible. Incomplete ones aren't bad for you, but you're not going to get the full effect. There's a study, actually, um, so I put on here, almost can't turn into body fat. We have never seen in a clinical study that forcing people to overeat on protein that they gained a single ounce of fat. My favorite study showed that they took a group of women and made them eat well over 300 grams of protein per day. They did gain weight, but not a single ounce of body fat. They grew stronger bones and gained muscle. Protein does not want to turn to fat in the body. However, it is biologically possible for it to happen, but we haven't seen it in a clinical study. What are optimal levels of protein? So when we look at a clinical study, it looks like the best number is 0.8 to 1.2 grams per goal body weight. We'll get into this a little bit later, but studies show protein helps decrease appetite. Those who switch from a high carb to a moderately lower carb with higher protein eat on average 441 calories less per day. It increases metabolism, it increases fat loss, it preserves toned muscle, and it's okay for 99% of the population with adequate water intake. Now, if you have renal failure or known kidney issues, then you need to talk to your doctor before increasing protein. However, um, you would know if you have kidney issues if you've had any blood work in your life, because typically it's a genetic issue, unless you are in renal failure. So just some information. Amino acids are what protein is made of. Actually, our DNA is made of amino acids. There's two, really there's three types of amino acids. We have branch chained. These are the most important. Our bodies need these to survive. It's leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They're also the most important for fat loss and muscle toning. The essential amino acids, which I talked about earlier, are the nine our bodies can't create on their own. There are, they include the three branch chained plus six additional amino acids. Amino acids can help repair with injuries, help grow muscle, and can help with the metabolism. Micronutrients. Guys, this is probably the most important thing we don't think about per se when it comes to weight loss. Vitamins and minerals we receive from food and supplements and drinks do everything in our body. We're talking about increasing our immune system, increasing the metabolism, increasing cell health, cognitive function, um, literally everything. When we look at deficiencies in Americans, we look at 92% of Americans being deficient in one or more micronutrients at any given time. If you're a picky eater, or you're doing a specific diet like keto or low carb, more often than not, you're going to be deficient in multiple micronutrients. Common vitamins in their roles. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just skim through this. Obviously, you got the, the big six, A, B, C, D, and E, and K. Um, some of these are fat soluble, which means that our body has to use fat with it to absorb correctly inside the body. Water soluble means that basically any type of water will help it dissolve in the body. The ones that I want to talk about for weight loss, we're seeing really B, C, and D are my three most important. B, we see for energy levels. 
you'll you'll hear about getting injections of B vitamins because your energy levels are low. Um, this is this this does happen, especially when you're dieting. You're not going to be eating quite as much B vitamins as you may need. Your body actually may need. And then when we cut calories, your energy levels go down anyway. So it's kind of a double whammy. Vitamin C, we think about it for immune system and a powerful antioxidant, but we're actually seeing a link between vitamin C deficiencies and being overweight. Uh, vitamin D, which is my favorite multivitamin or vitamin, really helps with so many different aspects. It helps with seasonal depression. It helps with weight management. It helps with muscle gain. It helps with hormones and so much more. So those are my three really important, although they all are important, vitamins. Then we have minerals. Um, you know, iron, super important. Lots of women are deficient in iron. It's in, needed for clotting blood and, and several other processes. Magnesium is one of my favorites because it actually helps you sleep better um, and also can help with many, many other uh, issues in the body. Sodium is probably the mi most misunderstood out of this list because we think sodium is bad, but in reality, our heart wouldn't beat without sodium. Now, too much sodium is bad. It also causes water weight gains, but our body does need sodium to survive. Potassium is actually the opposite of sodium when it comes to water weight. If you do ingest potassium at the right levels, it'll actually help you get rid of water weight. Uh, chromium's cool because if you have insulin resistance, it can actually help you uh, use the carbs you eat better. And kind of uh, when it comes to thyroid health, if we are creating the powerful weight loss hormones, T3 and T4, our body needs iodine and the amino acid tyrosine. Water consumption. This is also something that many people lack, especially Americans. We are typically dehydrated. Studies show that being dehydrated can cut your diet or your metabolism by up to 20%. I'll be honest with you, the most powerful fat burners legal in the world right now will help your metabolism only 8 to 12%. So if you are dehydrated and taking a fat burner, you're still not getting the benefit as you would just by drinking more water. Our body holds water when we are dehydrated. We're like a cactus. The way our water hormone works is if you're not drinking much water, our body's like, huh, Dustin must be in the desert and there must not be any clean water. So I am going to hold on to all the water I have. This is what causes bloat. However, when you start drinking a lot of water, that water hormone flips and allows you to basically pee out all the excess water. Water also helps you stay full because it puts, you know, something on your belly, which is going to keep appetite suppressed. Yes, 100 ounces or more is optimal for muscle toning or weight loss. Now, as a bro and, and, and a coach, this is something that I have not focused on until the last, say, 18 to 24 months, and I was an idiot. Uh, gut health really helps not only just weight loss, but your immune system starts in your gut, chronic inflammation, and more. Our gut, we're not what we eat. We are what we absorb, and that starts in the gut. Poor gut health can cause our body to store more fat, even if we are eating healthy. Um, cortisol, the stress hormone, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, increases with poor gut health. Studies actually show that we need to eat five plus servings of different veggies each day. This is important because a lot of people will eat, you know, three, four, five, six servings of broccoli each day. The problem is, is the difference in the vitamins and minerals and fiber and such. And broccoli is totally different than Brussels sprouts. It's different than green beans. It's different than spinach. So it's different than asparagus. So we need a variety of veggies. Also, Believe it or not, you're supposed to eat three servings of fermented foods each day. Now, I have never ate sauerkraut. I have never ate kombucha. I have never ate kimchi. I don't even know what kimchi is, to be quite honest with you. I know it's a great probiotic-filled um, fermented food. Uh, Greek yogurt is the only one of the fermented foods that are rich in probiotics that I even get close to eating, and I don't do that more than like once a month. So obviously, the, these, this is an important factor for my health that I have optimized over the last year. My favorite study ever was uh, there was a set of twins, biologically um, identical twins. However, one was overweight and one was normal. Doctors siphoned the gut biome of each twin and then injected one or injected the obese twins gut biome into a rat. 
and then they put the the skinny twins gut biome into another rat. Those rats were actually from the same litter and they fed those two rats the same exact thing. One rat gained weight exponentially, the other one did not. Um, and it was linked to the gut biomes of both twins. So gut health is super important. This is something that I've really focused on and has helped me with my, my diet over the last 18 months. Not to mention it's gonna help with IBS, constipation, bloat, acid indigestion and all that. And water weight, real big. So our metabolism is, is how many calories a day our body can burn. Now, a lot of people don't know what the largest driver of our metabolism is. It's one of these four. Does anybody want to put in the chat a guess of which one of these four is the biggest driver of our metabolism? And NEAT, by the way, means non-exercise activity. So walking, blinking, talking, eating, or eating is under digestion, but you get my point. So which one of those four is the most important driver of our metabolism? Muscle, correct, two people said it, and they're, but they're both my clients. But <laughs> they've heard this talk before. Yes, believe it or not, even if you don't have a lot of muscle, muscle is the biggest driver of your metabolism. Your thyroid burns somewhere between two and 300 calories a day. And that's if you have a very optimal thyroid. Uh, NEAT, which is not exercise activity, burns, you know, four or 500 calories a day, walking, talking, blinking, heart beating. Digestion burns a couple hundred calories a day, but our muscle burns 10 calories per pound per day. So if you're 300 pounds, but you have 100 pounds of muscle, that's a thousand calories per day that your muscle is burning. Good job, guys. Basal metabolic rate. This is the amount of calories our body needs each day at rest to maintain our current weight. This is a number I like to use when I'm doing meal plans to figure out exactly how many calories my clients need if they wanna lose weight. Obviously, if you're active, you're gonna burn more than your basal metabolic rate, even if you're just walking because this is actually calculated at rest. This is really the number you need to kind of use. Now, we use calculators on the internet. You can type in BMR calculator. It's not going to be exact. It does not know how much muscle you have or if your thyroid's optimal or not, but it will give you a good estimate. So we talked about cortisol a little bit earlier when I was talking about gut health. So cortisol is our flight or fight or flight hormone. However, cortisol, if you don't, aren't super active while cortisol is high, it's going to cause your body to store fat. The two primary drivers of cortisol is inflammation in the body in being sleep deprived. Multiple studies show that if you are sleeping less than six hours in just one night, your body will store fat as, at the same rate as a diabetic. One night of lack of sleep. Unfortunately with Americans, we have majority nights lack of sleep. Not to mention when we talk about inflammation, we're not talking about like you twisted your ankle. We're talking about chronic inflammation like gut health, you know, our gut stays inflamed. Well, guess what? Cortisol goes up. We're talking about asthma. We're talking about COPD. We're talking about other lung issues. Um, these are all chronic inflammation disorders in our body. Diabetes is actually considered a chronic inflammation disorder. So it's all the autoimmune disorders too. So Margaret and I are going to talk about four diets. Um, now, this isn't all the diets. Obviously, there's paleo and carnivore and Atkins and Mediterranean and something called vegan where you don't eat meat. I'm still confused on that one. Um, joke. I'm not into I said that joke on a call with a bunch of trainers a couple of weeks ago, and I got hate messages. One woman was like, I am vegan. And I was like, I am kidding. And she, she did not accept my apology. So anyway, I still think, mm -hmm. it's, I still think it's hilarious. I'm going to keep saying that. So there's a lot of diets out there. However, these are the four that I do majority when I talk to my clients, when I take on a new client. Now, 92 to 97% of those who lose weight with a diet gain it back. And I believe 100% it is because the calorie counting fallacy. Everybody knows that if you eat less than your body needs, you lose weight. But here's the problem. If you eat less than what your body needs and don't focus on specific macros, you're going to crash your metabolism. 
The reason why is, is if you don't give your body enough protein, like we talked about earlier, 0.8 to 1.2 grams per goal body weight, our body is going to eat muscle and fat as we lose weight. And as we lose weight, our metabolism is going to crash because each pound of muscle burns 10 calories. So if I'm your coach and I tell you, you need 1600 calories to lose weight, and then you stop losing weight, the only thing I can do as your coach is to continue cut, cutting calories. Eventually, you're going to get a point that your metabolism has crashed so much that the only thing I can do is starve you. And obviously, that is not sustainable, nor does anybody in the world want to starve. Calorie counting by itself is the reason why people gain their weight back. It's just a terrible, terrible way of losing weight. Now, there are clients of mine who say have renal failure, kidney issues, and so we do have to manage protein better. There are reasons to calorie count. However, it is something that causes us not to sustain our weight loss. Keto. I am not, I am neither a keto fan nor a keto hater. The biggest loser I ever had in a 12 month span was a lady who, in 2017 that started the year at 301 pounds. And on December 31st of the same year, she weighed 150 even. She lost over half her body weight, 151 pounds in 12 months using keto. Here's the deal. And that's supposed to say keto is not a diet. I, I mistyped. Keto is a metabolic process. What keto is, is our body has two ways of running. The first one and the primary one is off carbohydrates. Whether we go low carb or high carb, our body's still using carbohydrates as energy. A trait that we get from our ancestors is being able to run in a ketosis state. Basically, our ancestors ate fruits and veggies and or fruits and, and berries during the spring and summer. But then during the winter, they shot ox and deer or whatever, saber-toothed tigers, whatever they shot. And that's what they ate. Well, guess what? All those animals have no carbs. So their bodies would run like ours normally does six months out of the year. And then when it got cold, they didn't eat much fruits and, and berries. So they ran off of ketosis the rest of the year. Basically, we are telling our body to stop using carbs. The way I explain it is it's like taking an unleaded engine out of your vehicle and putting in a diesel engine. You can't go back to unleaded in a diesel engine. Now, I know nothing about cars, but I do know that. So um, with, with keto, um, you got to cut carbs, typically 20, 30 grams a day. Um, it is super restrictive. You can't have a cheat meal. One cheat meal will cause you to kick out of ketosis, and then you'll get what's called the keto flu. You get keto flu for two reasons with keto. One, the first few days of switching to keto, your brain isn't used, it hasn't, excuse me, because you aren't eating any carbs, your brain isn't running correctly, and it has to wait until your liver starts creating ketones, which takes a few days. So the first few days of keto, you are going to feel like crap. However, if you give yourself just one cheat meal with carbs, you're going to go back into the keto flu. You don't want that. One thing, if you look up keto on the internet, you're going to see that these message boards will tell you, don't eat high protein. It'll kick you out of ketosis. It's because there is a biological process called gluconeogenesis, which, by the way, is the biggest word I know how to spell. Um, I don't know if that's sad or not. It's kind of long. But gluconeogenesis is a biological process in which our body can turn protein into carbs. However, um, it's almost impossible. And if you are being active, it just won't happen at any type of rate that would kick you out of keto. Again, if you want something super restrictive and easy to understand, keto may be for you. And I do get the question all the time, is it safe from a long-term perspective? The studies are still kind of out on that. However, if it causes you to lose weight and weight, you know, and, and being overweight is unhealthy, obviously you're going to benefit from that. Intermittent fasting is probably my favorite diet for the majority of women and a lot of men. I say I do intermittent fasting for my female clients more than any other diet, although the one we talk about after this is like my second. Um, intermittent fasting is great for regulating blood sugar levels. It's great with PCOS, insulin resistance, and infertility. The clients that I have that struggle with infertility, I work with their doctors using intermittent fasting to help lower blood sugar and reduce, um, to help with follicle production and to increase the likelihood of having a baby. And yeah, I'm a dude that works with a lot of women on infertility. Yes, I find that odd, but 
I'm, I'm pretty good at it. So intermittent fasting is that you sustain from food for 14 to 16 hours a day. So you are not eating for 14 to 16 hours a day. However, you do eat for eight to 10 hours a day. Most of my clients do 8 p.m. to noon fast, and then they use the rest of the eight hours as, uh, as the, for their meals. Now, there is some science to say it is the best for targeting belly fat. Now, when I say that, I mean that it may be 2% better than any other diet. I do not mean that it's going to magically erase all of your belly fat. Um, I wasn't planning on talking to this, but talking about this, but I will add real quick. Our body does not, spot reduction fat loss does not work. It's been proven many, many times. In other words, doing crunches won't magically cause the fat above your belly to be removed. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, it's a myth that we believe because of Suzanne Summers selling thigh master machines back in the 70s and 80s, and it just kept getting perpetually worse. Shocking devices, all that will not target belly fat any faster. Doesn't matter what you train or how you train, your body will burn fat, but it's not from any direction that you can pick. If that was true, then we would all have six packs and big butts and big boobs. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way unless you're a genetic marvel. Um, the problem with intermittent fasting is it is hard to hit your protein goals. If you're supposed to eat 120 grams of protein and I give you a lunch, a dinner, and two snacks, that is a lot of protein. However, typically my clients do not have an issue with that. A diet that, that Margaret does and myself is low carb, high protein. What we're doing is, is we're not eliminating carbs. We're not going into keto or anything else, but we are going to regulate the carbs that we eat. We're going to increase our protein to the levels that clinical studies say is optimal, which is at 0.8 to 1.2 grams per goal weight. And it gives us more freedom. And when I say that is, is you can still eat some carbs. You can eat breakfast. You can eat a midnight meal. It doesn't matter per se, as long as you hit your goals. Margaret, do you have any suggestions with how you do your diet, your low carb, high protein diet? Um, for me, the only way I can get all my protein in and the rest of my, like, I guess like my macros is that if I hit protein first. So my focus is protein and then everything else kind of follows suit after that. Exactly. And that's super important because guys, you know, if you have pop tarts for breakfast, you get four grams of protein. And if you're supposed to hit 150 grams of protein for the day, you are stuck behind the eight ball. you got a long day ahead of you. And I'm sure Margaret's been in this situation where it's 8 p.m. at night and we haven't hit our protein goal and we're eating, you know, two protein shakes or five eggs <laughs> or something late at night because we want to optimize our weight loss and our look. So it does become a little bit more or difficult if you don't use a diet like low carb, high protein and prioritize protein. Um, this is super important, guys. So we must track our macros. It is the most annoying thing about dieting. But if you want to optimize your results, you need to track your foods in either the First Form Transformation app, which obviously we think is the best, or my fitness pal. But you have to do that. Now, if you do the First Form app, and you have premium, which you should because you get all kinds of added features. Margaret and I can see what you eat. You can send us what's a, called an assessment, which we suggest every week, which sends us your updated photos. It sends you us your food logs. If you track your workouts in the app, it also asks you questions about energy levels and crankiness and mood and appetite and sleep, all of which are super important for us to make suggestions. Um, just 300 extra calories a day more than your body needs. 300 calories isn't very much, guys. And trust me, if I don't track my foods, I can guarantee you I'm gonna be more than 300 calories off. You will gain 31 pounds in one year being 300 calories off on your diet. Doesn't take much, guys, to gain weight. Actually, our body has more hormones to create fat than to destroy fat. Our bodies want us to be fat. Tracking macros is so important. Just like Margaret said, it's about that protein first. Calories and protein are the two most important. Um, and we're getting ready to talk about how the app will calculate your height, weight, goals, age, activity levels based off the information that you give it. All right, so before I do this, I'm going to stop screen share for a second, hopefully. Ooh, awesome. All right, all right, I just dropped mine. Thank you. Sorry, I'd have a, a refill. So 
before we go any further, do we have any questions? I'm getting ready to go over something that's even more complex than than what I just went over, but we're going to make it as simple as possible. Any questions on nutrition, protein, carbs, hormones, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, anything nutrition or diet based? Um, do you recommend like trying to do like vitamins to replace certain supplements or do you recommend going through like a diet aspect instead? Great question. So, um, and, and Margaret can attest to this too. Our, our goal is to help you get as healthy as possible um, without the need of supplements. Guys, we work for First Form, but at the same time, when I teach these classes to trainers all over North America, I stress the importance of us educating you on solid nutrition practices. But here's the deal. Margaret does low carb. I do low carb. We don't eat as much fruits as we need. We don't eat probably a diverse amount of veggies. We eat some veggies. I eat probably three servings of broccoli a day, but I'm not eating Brussels sprouts, green beans, spinach, asparagus, you know, and if I eat asparagus, it's bacon wrapped. So we're obviously, um. <laughs> we're obviously missing the mark on, on tons of vitamins and minerals. And so when we go into supplement suggestions, we will talk about having a quality uh, multivitamin but when it comes to, you know, we want you to do as well as you can on your nutrition. We obviously don't want you to eat Taco Bell five times a day, even if it fits your calorie and protein. We want you to eat things that's actually going to benefit you. Margaret, you got any two cents? Um, yeah, about the veggies you mentioned. I tend to flirt with the same few veggies. That's my comfort zone. So I know we're not talking about it right now, but like the off reds and greens. I fall back on that to make sure I get a variety because you're, the nutrients you get in is the most important part, like as far as protein too. So to help me get more nutrients and I eat my veggies raw because the less heat, the more nutrients you get when you eat it. So, that's and then also more vitamin. That's actually a phenomenal point. Yeah, we don't talk about that much and we will talk about it a little bit when we go into supplements, but heat destroys things. Now there is some, apparently with spinach if you heat it you actually get more stuff out of it but for the most part oh, yeah i think so okay i think spinach is the only one i can think of off the top of my head and i may be wrong but majority of vitamins and proteins and such once we char it it ruins the uh the structure of whatever we eating um jessica ask great question so the question she has is is do we need to hit a certain calorie goal or should we use exercise against that number? So basically, say I tell you, you need 1600 calories for the day to optimize your weight loss. Well, what if you eat 2000 and your fitness tracker says you burn 400? Is that the same thing? Not really. And I'll tell you why. Um, multiple studies have came out saying that fitness trackers are at least 40% off, if not more. So if you think you burned a thousand calories in Zumba, I can guarantee you, you didn't. My wife teaches an awesome Zumba class. I'm not talking smack on Zumba. I like Zumba. But unfortunately, fitness trackers are not accurate at all. Think about it. There's no way that an Apple Watch or a Fitbit is going to be able to measure your thyroid levels, how much muscle you have in your body, and the other determining factors in your metabolism. It's impossible, unfortunately. So what I teach as a nutritionist is, is I can get you to lose weight without working out. But working out is the gasoline that's going to ignite your diet. So if you can hit a specific calorie number and work out, we're going to be in a situation where you're going to optimize fat loss and gain muscle. So that's how I teach nutrition. It's, it's about nutrition first and adding the exercise to it. Now, if you are optimizing yourself, kind of like, you know, when Margaret got shredded or how I did my, my diet this year, it's obvious that you may need to, to reevaluate how many calories you need, right? If you feel weak or lightheaded because you worked out, you went a little bit low carb, then the next day, maybe you do eat a little bit more carbs and see how your body adjusts to that. So that's always super important. You know, our bodies will tell us if we're not eating enough, right? It's not, you know, you're going to get dizzy, you're going to get lightheaded, you're just going to feel weak, right? Um, so you can adjust that as you go. But for the most part, nutrition is the most important. Let the exercise ignite your weight loss versus being the primary point. Because guys, we call it chasing calories. You don't want to think that you burned a thousand calories working out and that convinces you to go eat pizza tonight. It doesn't work that way. So 
I want to add to that real quick though. Sure. Right? You're talking about your feelings and your body's going to tell you. you. Your body will tell you, but you have to keep track of that. So I keep a journal and I keep track of how I feel, how my brain's functioning, how I'm using the bathroom. When I'm doing things like this, I keep track of that. So I know if, I'm, if I need to recalculate or not. So I would recommend getting a journal and logging that during this eight week challenge. That has to be an interesting journal to read. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> gonna break into Margaret. <laughs> When's the last time she had a, be a bowel movement? Page oh, seven. Oh, they're in there. They, I, it's in there. <laughs> it's page I got seven. to see the journal. One of the first ones I got to see that journal and she was embarrassed to share it with me in the beginning. It was, it's real interesting. I have screenshots. <laughs> Cause I was like, I'll just go ahead and say it. I would log, like I drank my coffee and I took my morning poop and then I went to the gym. Like I keep track of that. That is, that is great. I do not do that personally, but that's actually really good practice, right? Because literally the more, and this is things that you can share with Margaret and I, if you feel comfortable and say, Hey, look, I know something that I talk to with my clients, a lot is constipation and IBS and things like that. And you know, if you do track those things and then you reach out to us through assessments or when you ask questions or whatever, we can optimize things. We can look at, you know, whether adding fiber or stool softener or changing what you eat or digestive enzymes or there's a ton of things we can do. But the big thing, yeah. the big Go thing ahead. at the end of this is if you have questions, reach out to us. We cannot help you if we don't know what you need help with. And keep, uh, keep in mind that everybody's bodies are different. So everyone's going to respond differently to different foods and different diets and things like that. So if you're not keeping track of how your body's responding, you're not learning yourself. Exactly. So I am going to share something. And this is going to be the most complex thing we go over today. And I'm sorry, but I don't think we would do a good job if we didn't share it with you. So this is going to be how to create a meal plan. And yes, you should see my screen with a whole lot of black boxes because I am going to share with these as we go. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Um, I did have a private question to ask, are your moods tracked in the First Form app too? Yes, through the assessment feature, it'll ask you questions about your mood and sleep and hunger and things like that. And when you answer them, it will send to Margaret or I uh, whoever your coach is, and we can make suggestions on it. I can tell you guys, when we talk about optimizing your health, obviously calories in, calories out, and protein and water and activity are the four most important, but sleep and mood and all that play a huge role. So I want to try to fly through this without being overcomplicating, but give you enough. So Sally is one of my clients, and Sally's a female. She weighs 200, and she wants to weigh 140 pounds. So when you use the app and you sign up, it'll ask you your height, your weight, your activity level, all these things, which we're getting ready to show you how that works in the app shortly. But it, 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 it excuse me, the app calculated that Sally needed 1,501 calories to hit 140, and that includes 140 grams of protein, 49 fats, and 125 carbs. So I worked with Sally, and I said, Sally, what do you do on a daily basis? And Sally works at the mall or, or some retail store. She says, well, for breakfast, I eat oatmeal and sausage. Even though I'm not a fan of Lynx, I said that was okay. I like Patty, to be honest with you, but Lynx are fine. And she eats oatmeal because she knows oatmeal is healthy and it keeps her full, which is great. I asked her if she had a snack between lunch and, or breakfast and lunch. She said, no, she's full. For lunch, she loves chicken nuggets because who doesn't? And I did misspell nuggets. Don't ask me why. And then she has a small waffle fry because you got to get the waffle fries. If you go to Chick-fil-A, you also got to get the nuggets or a sandwich. All those are great. And she has a small Coke. She just loves Coke. Not cocaine, but you know what I mean. And for snacks, uh, she actually eats three hard boiled eggs, which are phenomenal. Great choice. She knew they were healthy. She wants to lose weight. She eats three hard boiled eggs. Then for dinner, well, she's got kids. She's got a husband. So she goes to McDonald's. She gets the quarter pounder. She does get the, the small fry though. She, you know, she, she's watching her weight. And she does make herself drink a diet soda, diet Sprite because she doesn't want the caffeine that late. Now, my question for you all is, how many calories compared to 1500, how many calories do you think she's eating? Is she eating a lot more or less than optimal? 
a super lot, just a little over. How many think she does? And just put it in the chat because I, I can see the chat right now. Over. All right, I got one answer. Over. Anybody else want to chime in? And you can unmute yourself. You can talk too. I don't mind. A lot over, over, about 500 over, a lot more. Awesome. So at least you all get the, the gist of it. So I looked at her. I broke down her meals per by uh, her calories and macros. And at the end, I see that she's eating 1,916 calories, which I will be honest, if I would have saw this and not paid attention, I would have thought she was like 8,000 calories over. But actually, she's only 400 calories over. However, from an optimal standpoint, she's only at 86 grams of protein, 76 fats, which, which might be a little high, definitely since she's getting it from, from fried foods and, and, you know, not very healthy hamburgers. And um, she's way over on carbs, you know, and you know, and in, in, in this situation, by the way, when you sign up under the app, it'll ask you if we'll, we'll show you this here in a second, but you can pick if you like carbs more or fats more. Um, but it'll also adjust your fats and carbs for you. So I talked to Sally and I said, Sally, here are things I normally do this one by one, but for time argument, this is things that I would suggest to help you hit your goals. So I talked about how. I like mixing level one meal replacement protein from first form inside my coffee, whether I'm doing a cold brew or a hot coffee. It tastes amazing. It tastes like it's Starbucks, but it's 138 calories, 25 grams of fat, two carbs, and, or two fats and five carbs. It gives you the, the feel of Starbucks, but it's only $1.67 versus, you know, $5.99. I asked her then, I was like, well, you know, level one does hold you over, but it may not hold you over as much as two sausage links and oatmeal does. So why don't we add uh, a string cheese and an apple to your snack? This will give you some good fruits, but also give you a little bit more protein. For lunch, she told me she didn't have a microwave and that's why she goes out to eat every day. And I said, that's fine. Let's just try to make better options. So I convinced her to do the grilled chicken nuggets, which save on fat and save on carbs. And I had her do, I let her eat the waffle fries. Hey, that's fine. You're giving in to me on some things. Waffle fries are fine, but when you do a Diet Coke. Then, actually, three hard-boiled eggs would have been phenomenal here. I said, but here's another suggestion. I said, hey, you can take deli meat and roll it in cheese, and it makes these kind of uh, deli meat rolls. It'll help you with your protein. It tastes great. It keeps your calories down. And she said, awesome, I can do that. And then for dinner... I told her, hey, look, we're already ate out once today. It's just, we, we can't habitually eat out constantly and expect to get the results we want. So I said, hey, I know, you know, would you consider some sirloin steak? I put asparagus in there just because I wanted you all to see the calories from it. Obviously I wouldn't suggest asparagus as the primary source of veggie for most people. I would say broccoli or, or green beans or something um, and a baked potato. She says, hey, that seems reasonable. So I told her how I make my steaks, which are the best. And then I said, hey, you know, I know you're working out. It's so important for you to have a post-workout shake. Post-workout shakes help you with soreness and recovery and optimize your results. Would you consider, you know, having a, a shake after you work out? And then I expressed to her the importance of, of because she's not eating enough veggies, she's not eating that five or more veggies a day, nor is she eating anywhere close to the amount of fruit you should have for heart health and antioxidants and immune system and all that, but also for your metabolism. I said, hey, why don't we do offy greens and offy red by first form before bed? She said, that sounds great. I just want to get healthy. And then at the end of it, we compared it and I, we were almost exactly where we want to be. Guys, we don't have to be exact. As long as we're in the ballpark, we're going to see great results. So little less on our protein, but really close, uh, almost perfect on fats and, and almost perfect on carbs. Now, I will be honest with you guys, and you're going to already see my ugly mug, so beware. Okay. I will be honest with you guys. This is the hardest part about dieting is knowing what to eat, right? It is so difficult if you don't have 
a, uh, a, a like a nutritionist or coach to actually make your plans for you or a dietitian, it is tough to just make a plan off the top of your head. So what I suggest doing is when you download the transformation app, or if you if you do use my fitness pal, you can pretend that you eat certain foods and you know say, okay, if I drank a level one shake for breakfast and I had, you know, some chicken and some rice and broccoli for lunch, and I had this for dinner and this for snack, where would I be at the end of the day? And then it'll kind of show you how many calories, protein, carbs, and fats you eat. And then you can make changes like, okay, I can have a snack. You know, string cheese has six to eight grams of protein per stick. I could do two of them. That gives me 16 more grams of protein and only 160 calories. That's the hardest part though, because if you don't know what to eat, it makes dieting hard. And obviously Margaret and I are going to point you in the right direction, but at the same sense, you want to include foods that you obviously want to eat because guys, all diets work. It's the consistency of the diet that's going to, to help the most. So I'm getting ready to share my screen and go back to the, uh, the slideshow. So. Wait for my slide. I will say real quick, the only reason I, I, I ran through these so fast um, is I am a nutritionist, so I just wanted to teach the, the real nutrition part. Margaret knows her stuff, obviously. She's going to be able to answer all these questions, so I just, but she wanted me just to run through them real fast instead of, you know, taking up a lot of time. She knows this stuff. She's your coach. You're going to get awesome results. Feel free to reach out to her. So when you use the Transformation app, um, you're going to log in. It's going to ask you your height, your weight, your age, your, your goal, your gender, all that stuff. And then it's going to, um, these are things that you can change after doing it to, uh, to figure out what your meal plan is. Now, if you want to figure out how, what you want to do with foods that you actually like, you want to switch the what are you more likely to do to calorie macro counting. That will uh, you have to have premium, by the way, to do these. Sorry, you have to have premium. Uh, but premium $6 a month, and you get a ton of workouts and a ton of other features too. So once you switch it to calorie macro counting, it's going to let you be able to key in your own food. Now, if you have no clue what you're doing, you can keep it on the standard settings. And when you go to nutrition and actually add foods, it'll tell you what foods you should eat each day. So it kind of does make you a meal plan. Now, just like I said, it's going to be foods that they suggest to you, not necessarily foods you want to eat. So in this scenario, I eat more fats and carbs. Um, my body responds better to a higher fat diet. Yours might respond better to a higher carb diet. So that really doesn't matter per se. Um, it's all about hitting your carb, your calories and protein. That's the two most important things. Then when you go on to, now the second image is scrolled down from the first image. Unfortunately, I've had to, uh, screenshot and edit a lot of these you can tell them what your goals are like and for my scenarios gain lean muscle now here's the most important daily activity level 99 percent of people put the wrong thing and i know this sounds crazy but i am sedentary and i would bet that most of you all are too for the for when the when first form created this app and you know they have like low or they have a uh, sedentary then they have like uh, I can't remember the next activity level, but then it has intermediate, and then it has high. Everybody thinks, hey, I'm not lazy, I'm intermediate. Well, the problem is, is it takes, it factors how many calories you need, and then it multiplies it by your activity level. If you put that you're active, then it's going to give you a ton of calories you can eat. The problem is, is I work out every day, so does Margaret, you know, we, but for the most part, we're not working out 12 hours a day. We're not roofers, we're not bricklayers, we're not laborers. So for the most part, we're all sedentary. If, unless you are putting in six to eight hours of activity a day, if you're a nurse, maybe you aren't sedentary. But for the most part, most people in the app are sedentary. If you adjust that activity level, the calories, protein, carbs, and fats will change dramatically. Actually, protein won't change, but the carbs and fats will go up a lot and then your calories will go up a lot. I've had people needing to lose 10 pounds and they're 150 pounds and they put that they were super active and it said they needed 3000 calories a day. 
the app's not wrong, unfortunately, but the way they track it, track activity is crazy. I'll say it that way. Margaret and I both know the guy that is in charge of the app. He is phenomenal. He's actually from West Virginia. For those that's on the call that's from West Virginia, he is amazing, Jeremy Mullins. But the activity level is a multiplier. Now, when you go to add food, it'll be on the very first screen when you log into your app. Um, you click add food and then it comes up to something like this. You will click the plus symbol beside your first meal of the day. It doesn't matter if you're, first, if you're fasting, your first meal is typically lunch. That's fine. You don't have to do like meal 30 because it's in the middle of the day. You click the plus symbol. When it pops up, it'll ask you to type in what food you ate. In this case, I ate eggs. And then the edit food, the second image, it'll, it'll calculate all the calories, protein, fats, carbs, and fiber. All you have to do is say how much you ate and that's it. Now, where it says large, that's if it's a large egg. Most of the time we meet, we, we buy eggs at the grocery store. That's what they're called, grade A large eggs. Um, however, if you're eating, you know, steak, then you would put how many ounces it is or how many grams if you're weird and you measure things in grams because you're Canadian or, or something else. We won't judge you, but uh, then you'll click save. And then the next page, it'll show for meal one, I had three eggs. And that's the protein and fats I have. But at the top, it shows I've ate 215 calories, 19, 1, and 14. That's how you add foods in the app. I, we kept it super simple, but it's the same process. You add eggs and bacon, then you would, on meal one, add eggs and bacon. Uh, but you have to make separate entries. So how do we know what to eat? This is the biggest challenge, right? Margaret and I are going to help you the best we can. I do elite coaching with my clients, some of my clients. It is a paid service, but I actually create the meal plans and workout plans for them. They use the app to track everything. If you don't want to do calorie and macro counting, you can let the app pick, pick what foods you want to eat. However, it's highly restrictive. However, people get phenomenal results by doing that. Um, and then, like I explained earlier, if you're trying to make your own meal plan, I would just on, on today, if you've never used it before, just type in random foods and see what it would get you, the foods that you would actually eat, and then you can adjust it up or down to make sure you hit your calories and protein. All right, Margaret's going to take over for a second so that I can get my voice back. <laughs> okay, guys, a lot of this we've already talked about, but um, obviously you can read along. You know what I'm about to say to you. Um, so for starters, number one, count your macros. We've already talked about that. I want to touch on that though. Don't, don't blindly do this. It's like the whole out of sight, out of mind is a real thing. So if you're blindly putting things in your mouth and not tracking it, it's going to mentally be a lot easier. So don't, don't do that. Um, increase your activity. So calories in calories out. You want to, um, create a deficit there. Uh, drink a minimum of hundred ounces of water a day. I personally go for a gallon, which is, what is that like about 130, a little short mm -hmm. of 130. So that's what I prefer to do. Um, but take that as you will. Um, one gram of protein per body weight. The way that I remember this is cause I'm, Dustin's more educated in this than I am. So I keep things super simple. So muscle burns fat, protein feeds muscle. So the more muscle you have, the more fat you're going to burn just by sustaining life throughout the day. So again, like we said before, your most important thing right now should be hitting your protein and then everything else should follow suit after that. Um, hey, real quick, I want to ask you a question. So when it yeah. comes to protein and you talk to your, your clients or, or transformers in the app, as we call them, you know, do you get a lot of feedback from women saying, you know, man, that seems like a lot of protein? Yes. And then they say that they don't want to look like a man. And then I say, oh, cool. I feel like you're telling me I look like a man. Thanks. <laughs> it's awesome. a tough conversation. It's a tough conversation. Yeah. Yeah, but no, protein will not hurt you. It will not make you less feminine. Actually, it'll tighten you up. It'll make you curvier. It'll make you stronger. Do it. The body type that you want, that you see on Instagram, they're high protein people. Normally. <laughs> yeah. Um, ask for help when you need it. I call it staying in the bubble. <clears throat> so stay in the first form bubble. There's um, a mass face, mass face. Why did I just say, oh, I just saw that about Trump earlier. They're talking about mass face. <laughs> Anyways, there's a Facebook page for the My Transformation Starts Today 
challenge, you will need to find that Facebook page, okay? Because they have daily things that they plug in. They'll have like recipe ideas. They'll have uh, workout tips. They'll have the coffee chats are on there as well as on the app. So stay in the bubble, ask for help, be involved, like fully dive in and consume yourself with this. Um, only weigh in once a week, nude, when you first wake up, before you eat anything, before you drink anything, that's your actual weight. Anything after that is extra stuff, okay? So once a week, we do it every Wednesday for the challenge. It's weigh-in Wednesdays. So also I want you all to put that in the Facebook page too. So, I just want to uh, add one thing. Guys, our weight changes up to seven pounds a day based off of what we eat and drink. So if you wake up and you don't weigh yourself until the evening, you could be five or seven pounds heavier. That's not fat. That's food weight. That's water weight. That's your body hasn't pooped weight. So, mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is, is I catch a lot of people wanting to weigh in daily. And so if you're just a little bloated, you're going to be holding two or three extra pounds of water weight. That does not mean fat. And you get discouraged when you weigh in every single day. We don't want that. Weigh in once a week. Let us know if you're happy or dissatisfied with the weight and we'll make some suggestions. It could just be that your body's not processing the weight waste as well as you want. Maybe you're not drinking enough water and you have water weight. Maybe it's that time of the month. Things happen, but don't micromanage it to a point that you're weighing yourself every day it will bother you mentally right and the whole thing is to become to better yourself and to have a healthier relationship with yourself if you become psycho obsessive about it that's the exact opposite of the point of this <clears throat> um you have anything else to say about that no you're all good okay um get your family involved or your loved ones, or whoever it is that you're living with, or whoever is closest to you. They don't necessarily have to be doing the same thing that you're doing, but they need to have a level of respect for what you're doing. Um, and then it, it can also help. Like for example, when I did the challenge, I let everyone know in my family what I was doing. Mine happened to be over Thanksgiving. I was a psychopath. I don't know why I chose that, but that's the life that I chose. Um, <laughs> so yeah. they made a separate meal for me because they knew how important it was to me. So. If you have a support system, dive into them. Real quick, if we need to be your support system, we will. I have clients yes. that unfortunately will get their husband on board and the female will lose 15 pounds and the male won't and he gets discouraged and then he starts sabotaging the, the female. This happens, this happens a ton. You know, actually I have a scenario where over Thanksgiving break, a client went home for, uh, for Thanksgiving and they were trying to force her to eat because she looked sickly. They were literally jealous of her results and were literally sabotaging her. Luckily, she didn't fall for it and it helped. But and that goes back into staying in the bubble. That's what we're here for. The whole first form team is here for that. So get involved. Um, mill plan. Okay. Set yourself up for success, not failure. If you don't have a plan, then how can you ex execute it? Execute it. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Cheat meals, not cheat days. It's gonna happen, we're human. You're gonna put something in your mouth that you're like, I probably shouldn't have done that, but like get back on track, okay? Don't, don't live in that moment. Keep going day by day. Don't make it a, a recurring pattern. Um, one, thing, one thing I wanna add real quick, guys. It takes 3,500 calories more than your body needs to create one pound of fat. I can guarantee you, if you eat five slices of pizza on a Saturday night, you're going to gain a quarter pound of fat at most. Now, you may gain water, weight, and bloat. That's different, but that's not fat. One cheap meal is not going to ruin your diet, not anywhere close to ruining your diet. However, if you say, if you do this on a Thursday and you say, screw it, I'll start again Monday, you will gain fat. Your body, you know, doing that three or four days in a row will start to reverse the results that you have. I call it staying on the trail. You can sightsee and take a few steps off the trail to see something, but you better be close to that trail and be able to get back on it. And you want to have a healthy relationship with food. So if you're having panic attacks and freaking out because you had one cheat meal or ate one piece of candy, then that's not, that's not putting you in a healthier place in life. So get over it and keep going. Um, and the last one. Oh yeah. Okay. So when you're working out, especially if you lift weights, um, even after you're done working out, your body is still burning the calories from the energy that you exerted in that workout for hours after. Um, I do recommend weightlifting because again, back to keeping it simple, 
the more muscle you have, the more body fat you're going to burn just sustaining life. So don't be afraid to pick up the weights. Um, cardio is not going to do it for you. It will help, but it's not going to, it's not going to answer or solve your problems. I love those tips. Literally guys, these, these are like the 10 most important things that you can do to really accelerate your weight loss. And, and which there's a chemo, there's a process in our body called EPOC exercise post oxygen consumption. And that's what she's explaining is, is when you work out, you still burn calories after you work out because your body's still burning through a lot of calories and it takes even more calories to get your body back to having your heart rate down and you're not, you know, dying from an asthma attack or, or whatever. And then just one other point, you know, if you don't belong to a gym, that's fine. Uh, body weight exercises create resistance just like weights do. So obviously weights are, would be better, but at the same time with COVID, I've had clients get phenomenal results not leaving their living room. Yeah, you can still gain muscle by not lifting actual like dumbbells. Right, but you need to you need to do resistance exercises. Yeah, whether it's weights or yes. body weights or resistant bands or or whatever. So um, we're going to go over four supplements here. One of which I did not list. But so if you're if you're new to your dieting and exercise, and Margaret and I say, hey, you need to eat 140 grams of protein, and you're used to eating 48 grams of protein, uh, we do suggest a quality meal replacement protein. Now. Here's the deal. I have never seen a quality meal replacement protein at Walmart or GNC. And the reason why we suggest level one is that it uses slow assimilation digestion, which means it mimics whole food. So it digests slower. The types of proteins that's in it don't um, dissolve fast, like some of the, uh, like the little made to go shakes or the GNC brands or whatnot. These are actually, think of uh, slim fast on steroids, right? It's a meal replacement. It's going to keep you full, but it's going to give you 25 grams of protein versus eight or whatever's in, in slim fast. Um, you can make pancakes with the cookies, French toast, mug cakes. I had a client lose 70 pounds and she drank one protein shake in six months, but she eats waffles every single day with it. Um, mm -hmm. So whatever it takes. Right. Any any other tips with the, the level one? No, nope, that's it. Awesome. A green supplement. Guys, if you're not eating five plus diverse servings of veggies a day or three plus serving or and or three plus servings of fermented foods a day, your gut health will suck. You will have more bad gut bacteria than good gut bacteria. You're going to see um, much more bloating, much more water weight retention. Uh, much more fat accumulation, much higher cortisol levels. Um, we suggest Opti Greens 50. We also like Opti Reds 50. Reds is uh, actually made out of uh, red fruits, like eggplant or reddish fruits, like eggplants and stuff that have really powerful antioxidants and heart health, blood flow, things like that. Um, you know, my wife and I both have some some genetic high cholesterol and and we're predisposed to have bad hearts as we age. So we make sure that we, we hit greens and reds nightly to help with that. Um, the 1DB fast pack will not be for everyone. It is a powerful fat burner. If you have high blood pressure, for instance, it may not be the best thing for you because it will increase your metabolism, thermogenesis, which just means uh, your body produces more heat to burn fat. Um, so you need to make sure that you're healthy enough to use a fat burner like this. The 1DB Fast Pack includes three fat burners, one of which is Opti Greens. Uh, one is a thyroid regulator, which actually helps your thyroid create more T3 and T4. No, it will not put you in hyperthyroidism. That's not what I mean, but it will help optimize the thyroid. Plus, it's going to crush your hunger, your cravings, and boost your metabolism. It is strong, and the dosages that's in it have been clinically shown to help with all these things, so it's not going to be priced like some $9.99 fat burner you find at Walmart. It's going to have efficacious doses, which just means clinical-based study doses of the things you need to maximize your weight loss. The last one that, that's not listed that Margaret and I want to mention is a quality multivitamin. The big thing, guys, is to make sure it, it's capsulated whether you're using a first form one or another company. Um, sorry, I had a private message. Um, capsulated actually will dissolve better into our bodies and we can absorb it. If it's the tablet version, like that looks like a rock, 
there's been studies showing that they stay in our system for days because we don't digest rocks. We don't have digestive enzymes and, and uh, acids in our stomach that, that are made to digest such hard stuff. Not to mention, and I'm not picking on GNC Mega Man and Mega Woman, but that's what they use, is these uh, permanent press tablets where they heat the ingredients. And as Margaret said earlier, you don't want to heat anything unless you have to. They heat them to high temperatures and then they mold them into tablets. So one, your body's not going to absorb it. And two, if it is going to absorb anything, it's not going to be in the primary state that's best for absorption. We suggest either Microfactor, which is a daily nutrient pack that has uh, 8 billion CFUs of probiotics, uh, antioxidants, CoQ10 for heart health, and three uh, multivitamins in one. So you're getting, oh, and essential fatty acids. So you're getting a variety of things your heart and body needs to optimize weight loss and health in one packet. Now, it's $60 for a 30-day supply. However, I dare you to find something, um, I, if you try to price those separately, you know, CoQ10 is expensive, EFAs are expensive, probiotics, depending on the quality, can be expensive, and multivitamins can be too that are, that are good. So for $60, $2 a day, you're going to get a little bit more protection for your, for your heart and your overall health. We do suggest that. Anything else you want to add with that, Margaret? Um, yeah, when you were talking about the oppy greens and reds, you might, I don't know if you said, you probably did, but the, how it cuts out on bloat, I'm sure you did say that, but uh, I did mention water weight a little bit, but yeah. Okay. So something that a lot of females don't understand or don't not, I shouldn't say they don't understand. They don't realize is whenever you get, um, all the nutrients that your body needs, um, it, uh, it helps your hormones a little bit. So you don't have the mood swings. You don't have the cravings your, uh, it'll level, level you out a little bit. So hormonally you want to do that. Absolutely. And actually one other thing I didn't mention, the one DB fast pack comes in two versions. There's a man version and a female version. Um, the, the female females can take the man version. The only difference is it has a little bit more stimulants in the male version. Uh, but the female version actually has ingredients to help optimize, uh, women's hormones. Now we're not manipulating hormones. We're not going to do anything like that, obviously, but it will help your body utilize the hormones you have better, which can help with, with many, many symptoms. Um, what am I well, yeah, of, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was going to say, cause of the foods that we eat where a lot of it's processed and tampered with foods is putting chemicals in our body that we're not either supposed to have there or used to having there. So it does mess with your hormones. So this will just not, like you said, it won't tamper with your hormones. It'll just put you where you need to be naturally. Exactly. I got, I did get a private question. When should you take Opti greens and microfactor? So functionally, <laughs> so I'm going to teach you two, two, two words that I use a lot. Functional means it's, it's, not perfect, but it's good. And then optimal obviously means the best. When it comes to multivitamins and greens and reds, science says it's best to take them right before bed. Because the reason why is, is it's not, your body digests a lot of food during the day, right? And so whatever we eat or we take is in competition with a lot of other things. Well, if we take it before bed, normally, hopefully we don't eat while we're asleep, <laughs> even though I ate a whole box of vanilla wafers of my son uh, earlier this week. Um, I was awake, but I don't remember. And um, so we're competing with less food, so our body is going to absorb those things better. The other thing, and, and this is something I teach to trainers, antioxidants are, act, are not actually good for you during a workout or around a workout. And I'm not going to get super, 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 super. If you want to know the reason why, feel free to message me. But our body doesn't use and utilize antioxidants well when we work out. So because of that, I would not take reds, greens, or a multivitamin um, before you work out or immediately after you work out. I would give it at least four hours either direction, to be honest with you. So I would suggest, um, well, I would say four. don't take it four hours before a workout and don't take it, say, an hour after a workout. So I would suggest just taking it all at night. That's when I take mine, to be quite honest. But I know that's a complex question. Just get it in. I don't care, you know, per se, but if you do want to optimize your results, that would be my suggestion. Any more questions I haven't caught up on? I'm sorry. And someone did say that they would not hit their protein goal without level one. It's tough, guys. 
It really is tough. Um, let's see. So we want you to join the challenge. So if you haven't already downloaded the app, hopefully you have, obviously, and hopefully you already have two amazing coaches or one, one of us as your coach. We're both going to help you. Phenomenal. Um, oh, actually, Margaret, I was going to have you go over this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. All right. I'll go um, over yeah, All go right. ahead. Okay, so download the app. We will be sending out some uh, information this evening to everybody that registered for this call. So if you haven't already, you can download the app. We'll also explain to you how you can join. If you already have us as your coach, you don't have to do anything. And we obviously don't want you to, to screw up and accidentally delete us as your coach, obviously. So don't worry about that. But if you haven't downloaded the app or when you look under advisor, you don't see Margaret or my name. We will give you instructions on how you can change it. Unfortunately, when you download the app and you don't use one of our direct links, sometimes it will put you on a random person's team. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you're not gonna be able to get the one-on-one -on -one, hands-on approach that Margaret and I can offer, right? It normally sends you to a random first form employee who coaches thousands of people and you may not get the level of service you deserve. You will input, obviously we want you to upgrade the premium. Guys, I can't express the amount of importance of this. It's gonna allow us to work with you more because we're gonna be able to see your workouts, your foods. We're gonna be able to ask you questions directly. Um, without premium, we can only see your pictures and that's it. You can't even message us within the app without premium. Six bucks a month, $50 a year. You'll put in your age, height, weight, goal weight and activity level. Like I said, I would put sedentary unless you are a bricklayer or a laborer that works on their feet at least eight hours a day, you're gonna take your photos in the app. A lot of people think you can upload your photos. Can't do that, unfortunately. You have to use the app. This prevents people from cheating because we have all seen people cheat and use a photo from six years ago and say, hey, look, I lost a hundred pounds in eight weeks. It doesn't happen. So you're gonna click the plus symbol. So you're gonna click menu and then the plus symbol beside photos. You'll take your photos with the app. Both Margaret and I do suggest you taking them weekly, although uh, every two weeks or every three weeks is fine. But the thing about body weight is, is you're going to recomposition yourself, meaning that you'll lose fat and gain muscle. So some weeks you may not technically lose a pound, but you may have lost three pounds of fat and gained three pounds of muscle. Muscle is 10 percent less volume than fat, and I'm going into stats, but basically you're 10% smaller if you had 3% pounds of fat loss and 3% pounds of muscle loss. So you're gonna see those changes in the pictures far more than the scale in a lot of situations. Margaret, how much did you lose when you won the 10,000? Uh, I think I lost, I think it was like 20 pounds. Yeah. And if you look at those pictures, it, it's wild because you can tell she she lost a ton of fat, but she gained so much muscle at the same time that she she probably lost 30 pounds of fat and gained 10 pounds of muscle. I mean, <laughs> seriously, that's how our bodies work. So if you give it enough protein and you work hard enough, that's what happens. Um, I, I tend to tell people, and you may, I don't know if you're going to disagree with this or not, but people that are on, like, on my side, under my name, um, I would rather them take the picture. If they had to pick one, weigh in or take your picture. I think the picture is more important. Absolutely. So if you have to choose or you don't have time or you forgot or whatever, if you can't get your weight in, at least make sure you get your pictures in because that's, that's how you don't really know. Now there is a timer feature on the app so that you can, you know, place it on your, your counter or stand or whatever. So you don't have to hold your phone. Obviously, if that's the only way you can take your picture is to hold it in front of a mirror, that's fine. But the, the, the better quality and the more we can see. Oh, real quick. I would wear either... And guys, this is all about comfort. Only Margaret and I can see your pictures unless you win or you, you, you share those photos, okay? So um, if, if you are comfortable with it, shirtless for men or a sports bra for women is phenomenal. If you're not comfor comfortable in that, that's fine. I just would suggest wearing something a little tight. So that way, as you lose weight, we can definitely see the progress your body's making. If you wear a shirt that six sizes too big, you could be losing a ton of weight, gaining a bunch of muscle, but we're not going to be able to see really the changes, right? So trust me, Margaret and I don't want to share your pictures on the internet without without you letting us, right? So no issues there. Um, stay in contact with us throughout the process. If you need motivation, you need help, you need suggestions, you're bored and want something different, contact us. We'll help you out. 
and you have to take your photos between January 1st and tomorrow night at midnight to enter this $50,000 challenge. On top of that, so they do four $50,000 challenges a year plus one year round challenge for $50,000. If you want to win the year round challenge, say you have 150 pounds loose, fantastic. We're going to get that off of you. Chances are you would do better competing in the year round competition. We still want you to compete in each one of the competitions, but you'll need to take photos as you go to, to get that. I know, actually, a good friend of ours, uh, Margaret and I, was a coach of the year round winner, JC. Uh, a friend of ours uh, was the coach of the, the gentleman that won the 50,000 for the year round challenge this past uh, couple weeks ago. So, questions. Yes, you have put up with Margaret and I rambling for a ton of time. Heck, I don't even know how long. Hour and a half. A little bit, little bit better than I thought it was. Oh, no, actually, I thought it Okay, we did good. I think we did it. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, guys. Yeah, absolutely. We, we kept the majority of them. We only lost maybe three throughout the process. So that's good. Hmm. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or submit questions in the, in the chat. Hold on, I had a question, but where's my glasses? There we go. I'm blind, so let's see. So I had a, a private question saying that they use my fitness pal and they struggle horribly getting protein in, um, issues increasing the protein and comp, uh, constipation issues. And they were a big fan of Margaret's idea of a journal, but what are some tips to increase protein and to help with constipation? Great question, because I love talking poop. So, um, <laughs> same these. <laughs> so guys, this is something, that, and, and I'm not picking on women directly, but you all typically have these issues far more than men. It happens with men, obviously, but it, it women just typically have more slower uh, digestion, like bowels, and and so this is quite com common. So when it comes to protein, obviously, if you struggle a lot, you know, level one can help you. But I would rather also give you advice on eating some snacks throughout the day, whether it's you know two pieces of string cheese is 18 gram or uh, 16 grams of protein, pork rinds, beef jerky, all of which are high protein. Um, now. With pork rinds and beef jerky and some things, they are full of salt. So you want to make sure you're drinking enough water so that way your body's flushing out some of that, that water weight. Um, and then there's nothing wrong with trying to, you know, if you're used to eating four ounces of grilled chicken and doing six ounces, if you can eat it, I don't want you to force feed yourself. But if, if, if that helps you, you know, two ounces of chicken is like, uh, I think it's 16 grams of protein. So from going from four ounces to, to six ounces moves you up to about 48 grams of protein versus 32. So these are all ways to, to take baby steps in, in increasing your protein level. The other thing I want to say is, is if you're not used to eating that much protein at all, I want you to start off hitting 100 grams. But know that the next week, I want you to get really, really darn close to whatever goal we have set for you. So if your goal is 150, I'll give you a week at 100. But then the, your next step is to really make that, that leap uh, to really get to that goal. Uh, Margaret, what would you add with protein suggestions? Um, they're not going to like my response because I eat really bland and the same thing every day. So just do it and force it down. And if you're constipated, reds and greens and higher fiber. Yeah. And, and don't, and, and guys, don't be afraid of taking like a stool softener. And let me, and without and more water, water's going to help with that too. Yeah. So not to go super nutritionist geeky, but when we change our diet, so our body uh, creates digestive enzymes based off the food that we eat regularly. So if I eat pizza seven days a week, I have digestive enzymes that are really good at that digesting pizza. Well, then the next day, if I switch to, you know, six ounces of grilled chicken and some steak and some lean beef and a protein shake, guess what? I do not have digestive enzymes that's ready for those foods. So that's why when you hear people increasing protein levels and they, they get stopped up, it's not necessarily the protein shake or steak or chicken. It's the fact that our, our guts haven't optimized that. So one, you're going you're gonna to get some change. Anytime you change your food, you're going to get some change of your bowels. 
However, Opti Greens with digestive enzymes and, and more serving to probiotics and, and greens are going to really help you with that. However, I do suggest taking, if you're someone with slower bowels anyway, I do suggest taking um, stool softener. Don't go x lax or anything. We, we don't want to go that route unless we absolutely have to. I would rather you talk to your doctor than go to x lax I would rather you do some stool softeners, which is going to help break it down in your system better, and you're going to get better results that way. Hold on, I'm getting questions. Huh? And So Alyssa asks, so the macros in the app, should we work with one of you to customize those to go into or use the app recommendations? I know we talked about protein per body weight, but from the app, my recommended isn't there. Um, you can feel free to pick our brains and we can help you a little bit. However, um, we're not registered dietitians, so all we can do is make suggestions. We're not prescribing and, and obviously, you know, that's, um, you know, whatever we say and suggest are just suggestions. We're not prescribing you, um, you know, like, hey, you're going to get rid of cholesterol. We're going to prescribe you a meal plan. Obviously, that's not what we're doing. But we can help make recommendations to optimize things. You know, I got clients with PCOS or insulin resistance or prediabetes or, or regular diabetes, uh, type 2, not type 1. Type 1 is an autoimmune disorder, so we got to really be careful with that. But, and then, so I'll say, hey, you know, maybe we should lower your carbs to 100, man, let's raise fats a little bit. So we will help you in those situations. However, the app does give you a good starting point, right? So, and you can put custom, I mean, if you want to override the app, you can, that's up to you. You can say, hey, look, I don't think I would try, you know, if it says you need 1500 calories, I would try it. But if you think that that's too little or too much, you can't override the system. Margaret, you agree? Yeah. Um, another person asked. They're sending me direct messages, which is fine. No worries there. You can keep doing it, but it won't actually show me who asked the question for whatever reason. If the food log in the app is custom, is the food log in the app is customizable for recipes and traditional recipes? If you put it in once, you can save it uh, to my knowledge. And so that you don't necessarily have to continually, you know, if you do like my world famous uh, lean beef, rice and bone broth, you can type it in once and save it as a recipe. And then that way you can just click it versus uh, having to write six ounces of beef, half serving of rice and four ounces of bone broth each time. Let's see. Ooh, max sodium a day. So <laughs> I, 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 I sigh at this one because it is actually a complicated answer. It, it kind of depends. Now, if you do not suffer from high blood pressure, um, they say somewhere between 2,000 milligrams and even up to 4,000 milligrams is fine if you work out. Um, sodium actually helps you recover faster and helps with like muscle spasms and, and things like that post-workout. Uh, however, if you start catching yourself holding more water, you know, your rings aren't fitting well or, or you feel a little puffy, that might be because you're having too much sodium, so you would want to lower it. But really, they say two to 4,000 milligrams is fine unless you have high blood pressure, and even then you still need some for heart function and contraction and, and, and all that. Man, y'all got good questions. I was, I was expecting, like, simple ones. I didn't expect to have to think. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> what else questions do you have for Margaret and I? Oh, water level one, microfactor, and greens are my life. Yeah, I mean, literally, guys, and let me actually, so not to get philosophical, but um, our goal with you all isn't just to make you look darn good in a bikini or a mankini. Our goal is to help you improve your overall health while optimizing your weight, right? You know, there are illegal supple substances out there, whether it's steroids or illegal fat burners that will make you look great while killing your heart at the same time or killing your kidneys or your liver or whatever. Obviously, your health is the priority, right? And our bodies actually, so we have, you know, survival processes that we, we need to to make sure that we hit before our body will even allow us to focus on weight loss healthy wise. So say for instance, 
you're not eating enough vitamin D or you're not eating enough vitamin C or chromium or iron or whatever, that's immediately going to make weight loss harder because our bodies want to survive. There's more hormonal traits in our body to store body fat than burn body fat. So we have to optimize certain things to optimize weight loss. So by focusing on health and weight loss, you're going to see better results than just one or the other. So that's why we were talking about micronutrients. That's why we were talking about optimizing gut health. Those things help tell our bodies, okay, I can't focus on weight loss because I don't have to worry about being deficient in a certain vitamin or mineral. So it's important from a health perspective to make sure that we, we do things like that. Um, and that's kind of what, what my wife said, you know, she, she does level one, but she also does microfactor and grains to help with her heart health and gut health and immune system and all those things. Because guys, you know, if you're constipated all the time, you're not going to want to work out. If you're bloated, you're not going to want to work out or you're going to have a crappy workout, right? If you are sick because your immune system failed because you don't have enough vitamin C in your body, you're not going to work out, right? So by, by hitting certain goals with our overall health, we're going to get better results. So not to go on a rant on that, but that's, that's the, this whole call is about optimizing your health and getting phenomenal results at the same time. So raise your hand if you have your video on, if you learned anything. Oh, well, Donovan shared thumbs up. We won't hold that against her since I said, raise your hand. I'm kidding. Oh, and we're getting the raise hand feature on, uh, on uh, people actually use the, uh, the raise hand feature on Zoom. Awesome. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully this is going to kickstart your results and you're going to get phenomenal results in the challenge. Guys, we can only educate so much. Like, you know, we're, 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 we're willing to help you throughout the journey, but we can't hold a gun to your head when it comes to eating more veggies and putting down pizza, right? You know, now you can't pay us for those services. We will. I see there was a YouTube video of a guy that used to just go around like gas stations and knocking cigarettes out of people's hands, <laughs> but he was a really, really big jack dude. So nobody messed with him. So yeah, you can pay Margaret and I, we will come around and, and, beat you up anytime you eat that absolutely food. i'm here for it that's right that's right well, that's our new business margaret we're we're <laughs> get jacked and we will beat you up at the same time strong so, are you <laughs> but guys what we taught today if you need to gain weight these will help and, you know gain muscle or your little underweight or whatever your goals is to be you know more brawn if your focus is just gaining more strength and not necessarily losing weight or gaining weight these things will help you if you're wanting to lose weight, whether it's 150 pounds this year, which is totally possible, that's 12 pounds a month, or your goal is to lose 10 pounds, these work the same way. There is nothing that we taught today that doesn't help 99% of folks in their goals. Nothing radical. It's the same for everybody. And, and I know that a lot of us don't like thinking that way. We almost like, well, my thyroid's slow, so I'm special. But yes, your thyroid is slow, right? And it does impact your metabolism. But guess what? Focusing on micronutrients, focusing on activity, focus about eating quality food, it's going to help your thyroid, which is going to help you lose weight. So obviously I'm not picking on thyroid. My wife has some thyroid issues. It causes you to be cold. It's demotivating and it slows your metabolism, all of which are true. However, you can still do things about it, right? So. Um, I just got a question. It popped up through Facebook. Um, my favorite, favorite level one flavor, to be completely honest, I've only tried two. I've tried um, the pumpkin spice latte and then the um, ice cream sandwich. Uh, I love both of those. Um, I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about any of the other flavors, to be honest. Um, I don't want to say they're all good because everyone has their own flavor palette, but you can't go wrong. Just follow with what you usually like and you're going to like it. Trust me, you're gonna love it. <laughs> yeah, any of my client, I got a few on here that's that's been using level one for years. And uh, I've never had a bad flavor. Like I don't even like strawberries and the strawberry milkshake's good. Like I, I could tolerate it. But I, I will well. say I chocolate banana, which was just released. We go through one tub every five days. I'm not making that up. 30 servings in five days because we make the best banana pudding in history of the world. Ooh, I need to try that. It is literally 12 ounces of almond milk, four scoops of level one banana, mix it. It creates kind of a pudding consistency. We take a, 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 a baking dish, 
we line it with this is where it gets you in trouble because you got to have vanilla wafers if you're going to eat banana pudding and so try not to use too many but you line the the sheet or the whatever the baking dish with vanilla wafers you pour it on top you cut some bananas on top and you might and you refrigerate for one hour and it literally and i'm Christina can attest to this, and it's not just because I work for First Form. It's the best banana pudding I've ever had in my life, and you're getting like 30 grams of protein per serving. Like, it's just, it's insane. It really is. Um, oh, we didn't talk about working out at all, almost, right? But don't be afraid to, you know, a lot of people, especially bros, we don't like training legs because obviously we want bigger arms, right? Or we want bigger pecs or wider back. However, Science actually says that working out your legs creates more growth hormone, which is great for weight loss and looking younger, and releases more testosterone if you're a male. So you are hurting yourself by not training every muscle group. So even if it sucks, and every time you go to the bathroom, you're going to get stuck because your glutes hurt so bad, um, do it anyway. That's actually my favorite quote ever. If you don't feel like doing it, if you don't feel like doing it, do it anyway. I can tell you that's why, you know, and, and Courtney's not on here, but one of one of my, my clients that lost 70 pounds in five months, and she did it anyway. Like bad days, she worked out. Good days, she worked out. Bad days, she ate well. Good days, she ate well. Like literally, that's what gets, you know, my client lost 151 pounds in 12 months, did not take an off day. You just can't. Like if that's your goal, can't take an off day. When Margaret got shredded for the transformation challenge, how many off days did you have? Okay, I... I took, I did take one, one a week because you have to rest your muscles. It's very important. But there was a, there was a spell in the middle of the challenge where I missed three days in a row and I freaked out. I was so stressed out, but I listened to one of coffee chats and they said, um, sorry, I just read Christina's comment. Um, I read one of the coffee chats or listened to one of the coffee chats and they were talking about going day by day. So get back going and keep going. And I'll verify my point. I mean, like, but you were stuck to your nutrition throughout the process. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. There was no, there was no off day for the way I ate. Absolutely not. If I was PMSing, craving, it didn't matter. I don't care if I was in a bad mood or want a comfort food. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. So we, we, obviously we want you to take rest days when it comes to working out. Obviously. Yeah. Now, if you're doing 75 hard, Andy Priscilla's thing, then, then you can't take off days. It's a little different. Yeah, but, but you can do active rest days. So you don't have to. Um, I had another question. They were asking about the ingredients to the supplements. You can see the ingredient label online. So if you go to the app and click menu and then go to first form products, you can click on that. It'll send you to the website. You can see the ingredients in each supplement. Uh, Magical Charms is my favorite Formula One, which is our post-workout protein flavor. It is phenomenal. My second favorite, and it's really close, is Cherry Lime. And I know that sounds weird, but it has the consistency of Fruit Punch. And it's not heavy on your stomach, and it's really good if it's cold because it's like a refreshing after your workout. But Magical Charms is just, I don't even like Lucky Charms. I mean, obviously, they can't say Lucky Charms for trademark, but Magical Charms is legit, like super, super good. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get there. Da, da, da. Squats and uh, uh, squats, um, alternating lunges, and wall sets. Gave you that booty. I do a lot of walking lunges. It's my favorite go-to. Yeah. Um, so vegan options. So we, we, I picked on vegans. And I don't mean anything by, bad about it. However, um, we do have to watch out. So when I do take on vegan clients, there's a few tips I give to max, maximize your results. One, it is tough to hit protein goals with vegan options because most of your vegan options like beans or rice are high in carbs. And, and, and so you're like, yeah, I'm going to hit my protein goal, but I'm going to go 2000 calories over on my, my calorie goal because I have to eat all these carbs. So, you know, tofu and things like that can, can definitely help. Edamame is great. Um, now, I'm not going to get too technical, but too much soy can cause estrogen increases in the body and, and hurt men also. So just, just for reference there, it can actually make your PMS symptoms worse and all that. Um, however, Vegan Power Pro, oh, let me go back one step. Most vegan sources of protein are not complete protein. So we talked about earlier the non-essential amino acids that our body needs regularly. Most, other than quinoa, and some people say there is rice, some rices are complete protein, but for the most part, they are not. You're going to be missing key 
uh, amino acids that your body needs. So I do suggest supplementing with amino acids throughout the day. If you're going to optimize your muscle and toning and you are vegan, um, that's going to help. And it, it's non-meat sources, so it's okay if you are vegan or vegetarian. Um, and it's going to help you there. Vegan Power Pro by First Form is 100% um, uh, no artificial flavors in it. And what it does to create a complete protein is that it takes peas and rice. And if you, so rice, the rice they use is not a complete protein. And the peas they use is not a complete protein, but each one has the amino acids that the other one misses. So together they're a complete protein. I know this is super geeky, but vegan sources are not complete proteins. However, first form did the science and they combined two that are complete proteins. And so it's, it's hundred calories for 20 some grams of protein. So it's going to be low carb and uh, low fat. So it's going to be more macro friendly. So you can hit your calorie goals. B12 is great. Actually B3 is my favorite B vitamin. That's niacin, great for cholesterol and heart health. And I, and I do apologize. I did go super geeky through sections. <laughs> so, my bad. Uh, Jessica and Laurel, you have your hand raised still. I don't know if it's because you said that you learned something or you actually have a question. So if you do have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. If not, that's fine too. <laughs> Good. So look, I hope you all learned something. I hope this one to jumpstart your, your, your weight loss journey or your health journey or your muscle journey or your strength journey or whatever journey you may be on. Let Margaret and I help you as much as possible, whether it's, you know, if she's the coach or I'm a coach, we're going to help you throughout the process. And, and one thing I know about Margaret and myself, if we don't know the answer, we know people that do. So if we need to contact, you know, our registered dietitian friend or a doctor friend or something crazy, we will on your behalf or at least make a suggestion that's going to, to help you on your way. Um, any more questions? I don't really have a question. I was just going to um, let you all know that, you know how you had your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and everything? If you don't have Microsoft Excel, uh, your Gmail account, you can use Sheets on there and it does the same concept and you can download the app on your phone because that's what I use for the bar and like keeping inventory, but it's literally right there on your phone and it is the easiest thing to use. Like it lays everything out for you because I am obsessed with Microsoft Excel, so. Yeah, yeah, I, that's actually how I created the slide show is I actually created it in uh, Google Slides so I could share it with uh, Mo so that, yeah, it makes it so much easier to use Google mm -hmm. Slides or Google Sheets or, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, Google, is, the Google products are amazing. Earlier when speaking about asparagus, I missed that what you were saying, I caught that you would recommend broccoli, etc. No, asparagus is amazing. I just wanted to give you all an example of what its nutrient profile is. And I just said that if I was talking to a new client, I probably wouldn't be like, you need asparagus here. I would just, I just wanted to give you all the example that asparagus is good for you. Broccoli is great for you too, but you do want to diversify your veggies. Don't eat the same thing 20 times a day. That's true with everything. I mean, obviously, you know, when, when Mo does contest prep type diet or, or when I really try to, to get lean, Obviously, sometimes we have to eat chicken three times a day or, or eggs or whatever. But for the most part, if your goal is just to lose weight and look great, variety is fine, right? Whether it's, it's seafood or meat or chicken or pork or whatever, all of which are fine. They're going to have high protein, pretty, pretty same nutrient profiles for the most part. Well, guys, we super appreciate you. Every single one of you all, you all dealt with us for a long time, including me, Ramble. So I appreciate that. And we've gone for an hour and 54 minutes, which is far longer than I thought because I didn't think you all would put up with me that long. Margaret, maybe, but not me. <laughs> but you're going to get an email for, you're going to get an email from us either tonight or first thing in the morning, just kind of summarizing what we were talking about. We'll send you some links or some, some information on some of the products we suggested. Um, we'll also give you uh, how to join our teams. If you don't have us as your coach currently, her or me as your coach. Now, if you already do, obviously you don't have to do anything with that. Um, and then I'll also give you instructions on how to upgrade the premium 
um, in the app. If you don't have premium, you have to kind of do some things in the app to, to get premium. So thanks guys. We appreciate it. Mo, anything you want to add? Nope. Trust the process guys. It works. I promise. Stick yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my son broke there. You want to say hello? He just woke up. So Aiden says hello. You want to oh say hi? God. Oh, I have a, uh, a kiss of Mr. Potato Head. Nope. My ovaries. I can't do. Your ovaries. <laughs> now watch out. Going low carb will make you more fertile, girls. So just, just watch out. There's I'm in trouble. <laughs> They're like, we want high carb diet starting today. Yeah, I'm kidding. <gasps> I mean, I'm not kidding. It is true. But, you know, yeah, you don't, mm -hmm. you, don't you, you don't want this unless you want this. And you do want this, but maybe not today. Oh, I mean, I'd take like five. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Can I take well, five today, please? Last <laughs> night you could have had him. He, he was Godzilla for me. He was moving furniture. He played in the dog bowl. He, he did everything you could possibly imagine over a three hour period. So <laughs> he was fun. It's great. So, bye, guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.